Hello, how about now? Good, huge, great. I'm so sorry. Welcome, guys, to uh, this week's... This week's? Nope, tonight's playoff match between XO and THT. Uh, we're well on our way into draft right now, I guess. Um, see a couple comfort picks being taken away, a couple... Comfort picks being locked in as well. Um, we've got Caribou on Big Tank Sejuani Jungler. Huge, love to see it. Matched by an Amumu from XO. Um, we see last uh, last matchup between these two teams, they opted to actually give over the Velkaz and pick Zerath into it. So I guess uh, THD this week has opted to take away that Zerath. Um, and, you know, Velkaz was not available. The XO learned their lesson from that one. Um, Zara, <coughs> excuse me, Zara pickup on XO side as well. Um, not sure if we've seen Ender Wiggins on that yet this week, uh, this, uh, this season. Um, forgive me, some of my draft knowledge has slipped. NASA Ben, another interesting one. Hmm. Yeah, good shot there. I guess, um, you know, some of these picks that, um, you know, the jungle picks that Caribou is perhaps more comfortable on, usually the Bruisers, um, something like a Vi, a Zin Zhao, a uh, Shivana we saw come out as well, just not fitting into their comp this week. Looking like a strong catch comp right now. Very good poke from the Varus and Zerath. Going to be facilitated as well by Sejuani Alt. And Leona going for <laughs> a bit of engage. 
not quite what I would have expected with uh, Varus, uh, Varus Zerath, but let's see what they can do with that one. If anyone's interested in hopping in and casting with me, please, by all means, it'll be a very long best of three by myself. Orn being locked in from EXO. Love to see it. Bow, bow. Right, is Dan's subbing in? Is Dan's typically on THD? No. Dan's is subbing in as support for Asian problems. I see. I know Dan's is a big Amumu player, so that may have been a takeaway, honestly. Um, judging by the Le Leona lock, it might have been... Uh... <laughs> Thanks, Bananas. And uh, to everyone who agrees, I guess, as well. Yes. Um, so I guess the Amumu is actually a takeaway. Um, I'm getting secondary onto that Leona. It's gonna be a Kale locked in last year. Gonna have um, kind of a free ish lane into the Orn uh, after six. Up until then, though, Orn's kind of a lane bully. Might be a bit tricky. Jay's kind of spicy as well. Gonna be able to match some Xerath and Varus poke in the late game. Not sure how the matchup goes independently, though. Alright. Zaya is also pretty scary this patch, not quite as good as they were last patch before the Navori nerfs, but, you know, we'll see. It's a big comfort pick for Cincy after having the Caitlyn off the table. It's a good secondary for him. We'll see if he's able to poke out, uh... Uh-oh. Uh, oh no. <laughs> That's go Luzel in the bot lane. Alright, what have we got? R. Game's gonna be good? Sure hope so. Don't forget to get your gambas in. Looking heavily XO favored at the moment. 13k to 6k in their favor. Got a bit of a cough, so please do excuse me. I'll have to either mute or cough uh, as the game happens. Um. Wait, is this gonna huge? Uh, kind of huge. A little small, actually. Can we like center this a bit better? What is happening? No. Oh well. <laughs> well, got a bit of time to kill, I guess, before we get into game. Looking just purely at comps, uh, I'm really liking XO, honestly. Got a super safe AD. It's gonna be probably majority of their damage coming into the mid game uh, before Jace is fully online, and a great front line with the Orin and Mumu gonna be able to protect huge AoE team fights, uh, team fight ults as well. Uh, looking pretty good for XO. True Heart Destiny a bit harder to execute, especially with Varus Zerath against these strong dive champs on XO. Uh, you know, if Mumu is able to get on top of them, I think they're gonna have a really rough time staying alive. We're uh, just chewing through spectator delay now, uh, 2 minutes 30 seconds. I'll uh, meet back up with you guys when the game starts. Smile.
Uh, yeah. Sort. Um, right. I'll make sure to crank my gain and get real, real close to the microphone. Um, 40. 108, 107, 106, 105, 104, 103, 102, 101, 1, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Oh my gosh, guys, game time. I'm so excited. I hope you guys are just as ready for this as I am. Looking forward to a banger match tonight between EXO and THD. Thank you guys again for tuning in. We'll uh, get right into loading screen here, hopefully, if it lets me. Please. Please. Um, um, hopefully. Bam, huge. Okay. Any uh, masters? Right, looking for a big performance out of Decker. Almost 200k mastery points on that champ. Caribou with the uh, project. I didn't even know this was a skin. This just come out or something? 400k mastery and 390k on Danza's uh, Leona. Looking for some uh, strong performances out of these players. Oh, we've got almost a uh, full project lineup here, too. Huge. Yeah, just going off of Skinergy, looking very THD favored in Champ Select here. Or out of Champ Select. Right, now the wheel. Real question is, why am I still at 0% loaded? Any uh, answers? I have to quit out. We're gonna quit out. Oh. Ah, gee. <laughs> uh, okay, Spectate game. Let me in. We gotta load. Please. No. What the heck? Why is it showing my client? That's not right. Okay, hey, we're in. 
Kind of. Hopefully. Black screen of doom. I somehow resolved this last time. Okay, we've done it. Yes. We are in. Alright. Um, we gotta do some of these. Objective timers, please. Thumb controls off. Great. I'm so ready. Ducker finding an early victim here. And you get some first strike gold off. Oh, and the ward ping. Plus 11 gold. Huge. I unfortunately, again, don't have the overlays for the skin. However, um, we've got EXO as a reminder on blue side. THD on red side in this game. Gonna see a couple words put out early from THD's side protecting those jungle entrances. Maybe a bit scared of an invade here. <laughs> this is gonna be a very um either big or not big game. Yet to see. No interesting item starts, unfortunately. Thorn's Blade on two hands is a bit spicy, I guess. That's kind of it. See, so Mumu Dana Krugs. Perhaps going to be looking for level 2 bot. No, I'm gonna opt to go up towards raptors instead. Lately, jungle pathing, really been liking abusing the fact that bot lane is weak and level uh, 3 is very strong on junglers. So, it's been a uh, common pathing to go red raptors krugs on the red side, or on blue side, and head straight on down. Neither jungler going to opt for early bot ganks yet though. Lots of trading going on in the solo lanes though. All four solo winners down below half health. We see Caribou heading into river here after taking red. Looking for a gank onto Decker in the mid lane. He is gonna sniff it out though. Looking to actually back here. Ooh, Dan's going in deep here. Tactical Gazelle gonna get rooted up since he flash in to secure first blood. Dan's flashing back in, gets ignited. Does take down Ender Wiggins. Looks like he's going to be able to walk it out here. One for one trade on the bot lane. Gold onto Cincy is where Exo is going to be wanting it. Yep. Dan's going to, you know, get a cloth armor or something off of this. Maybe Ruby Crystal. It's not the worst thing in the world. Off for early boots instead. Tactical Zell gets back in time to pick up this big wave. Not gonna miss out on too much here. Caribou sneaking up into top bush. Early sweeper is gonna let them know he's not spotted here. Kale doesn't have too too much early damage, but uh, we'll see if they're able to take down the Ord here. Okay! Are they gonna get it under tower? Garibu forced to walk out, taking lots of damage from that tower. Reason buffs make diving much harder. <laughs> Crazy flash QW or a QW flash from the Sejuani though. I've never seen someone do that. There's a doom sneaking away with his life there, only having to burn flash. Probably gonna teleport back up here, yep, to catch the wave. Here comes Man Puppet, going straight for Tactical Gazelle. Does not care at all about Denz's presence here. 
It's gonna be a CC chain with the Qs from Ender Wiggins and Man Puppet. Another kill going over to Sensi in the early game. Solid gang clear. Not enough uh, CC from the Leona able to stop that from happening. Goes down without much of a fight. Here for the repeat gank. And Puppet missing Q number one onto Dance. There's Q number two going out. And Wiggins doesn't look like Roots up just yet. I'm gonna go wide as Dance sneaks out with the Leona E. Good heads up to repeat gank there. Dance sticking around a bit too long. Doesn't blow anything on the escape though. Here's that early uh, lane bully from the Orn. Gonna take half health off of two hands. Not able to trade too much back. See some great vision as well. If we look at the mini map in the top uh, top river from THD. Unfortunately, the move has been sitting bot, but. Good information to have, knowing he's not yet crossed up. Caribou knowing here, taking the blast plant going up top lane, that this is free for him to walk in, not gonna get counter jungled, or uh, counter ganked. Rays of Doom gonna spot him in river, opting to go hard in. I'm gonna get the ult off. Two hands taking lots of damage here, but able to kite it up. Gold going on to Kale, pretty nice. Gonna be very important to get that scaling into the late game, able to match the Zaya. You can see three members of EXO spotted on that river bush ward in the bot lane going up towards the dragon. Wasn't pinged out, but I hope that that's being communicated through comms. This is going to be a first Chemtech dragon going over for free. As punishment for Caribou ganking top. Not much they can do to contest that at this point in the game though. So, good work on EXO's side to acknowledge that, take it away while they can. Pretty even CS across the board. Decker able to use that early game range on Chase to pick up a bit of extra farm. About 20 up on Maze Mecha here. Looking up topside. Kale has unfortunately already backed. But I think, uh, yep, yeah, getting a word on that red buff. Gonna know when Caribou heads up there next. Alexo has full vision in the bot lane river right now. Not gonna be able to sneak in anything. Caribou maybe gonna take out some of those pink wards as they come into river here. Two hands with the recurve bow, actually able to trade a bit of damage back onto the sword. Not able to run it out fast enough against the tier 1 boots from Kale. Gonna take a lot for that uh, attempted trade. Here comes Decker. Not a lot of mana, but doesn't need it in the melee form. Gonna take half of Maze Mecha's health away for that engagement. Since he now level 6, Tactical Gazelle having that as well. Maybe looking for Balking from Caribou. No, opting to come towards the mid lane. See, so Mumu in top river gonna be here to counter gank. Pings on the map, do spot it out. Not able to get anything off. Maze Mecha, low on mana, low on health, not gonna opt to do anything too spicy here. We actually see a bit of farm advantage on Tactical Gazelle over Cincy here as well, despite being down two kills, two deaths. Able to pick up the creeps when they crash in. Holding the lane as even as possible, despite being down that gold. If I recall correctly, it's X for gold. Yeah, so only down about 400 gold despite being down 2 kills. It's uh, just first blood gold, the rest of it made up for in farm.
moves look topside now. They haven't been doing too, too much to try and stop this kill. Gonna get spotted on the pink ward. Clear that out. There's been some free farming up top for the most part. Apart from the uh, couple caribou attempts. Is Mecca not going to be picking up? Oh, hold that thought. Under Wiggins using the Zara ult here. They do have oh, four men here to dive this poor, poor bot lane. Q1 misses from Amumu. Dan's ult coming down, going wide as well. Man Puppet tanking up tower. Lots of damage here. Going to be traded back by Dan's. Good run by XO to get the four men dive bot, but unfortunately just one for one on this side. Caribou able to trade some gold back with the dive top lane onto the orc. Danzame's mecha here going in a bit deeper looking for more, getting Decker on the kill. Skill shots, yes! In the meantime, Caribou was able to pick up Rift Herald as well. It's gonna be crashing into the tier 1 here, taking plates, getting more and more gold onto that Kale. Zukale was actually able to pick up that kill as well onto the Orn, so looking pretty spooky at the moment. And Zaya probably gonna base for Mythic and tier 2 boots here. Um, oh, not quite tier 2 boots, gonna be another long sword here, I think. Yes, indeed. Oh, and selling the refillable for a second long sword. First tower, plus 625 gold going over to kill. Gonna be very spooky heading into mid game here. With the exception of two kills going over to Dan's, this is exactly where THD want their gold to be going. Full Nasher is now complete. For those who don't know, Nasher actually gives 100 AP, super strong item, plus the attack speed and on hit. It also gives CDR now, recent change. So looking pretty good on the on the KL here. Do have that item fully complete with boots. Anathem is on Orn, opting uh, not yet to complete the Merc treads, but hopefully keep himself a bit more healthy in that top lane one going. Oof. Flash in onto Decker from Caribou here. Gonna be dropped to start the fight. Under Wiggins ult coming out and going onto Dan's. Gonna drop here to Cincy. Start the fight. But he's in all alone now. Gonna go down as well. Big shutdown going onto Maze Mecha. Big team fight win by THD. He's uh maybe looking for something a bit less split. There was no teleport opportunity for Ares of Doom to join in on that one, because they are not yet unleashed. Gonna get some top tower damage out of it, but not too much. Dragon going down to THD on the backside as well. Great pick to start it off, and a great collapse onto the bot side there. Without uh, Man Puppet, I don't think even being close enough to support that fight. Oh, maybe a bit over ambitious for Mexo. Oh god, game frozen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh god, what is happening? No, okay, great, save. Man Puppet getting caught out here in river. Gonna go down to Maze Mech and Caribou damage. Oh, is that a smithy? Wide ult coming out of Caribou here. Two hands here for the collapse. Missing the slow, but just too much damage here. More gold going onto the Xeroth mid here. 
Decker just caught out a bit too far trying to save the Amumu. But, uh, you know, with the full Leandries completed on the Zerath here, that's gonna be a bit too much. Oh, <laughs> Gonna pop the Zyra ult to get Maze Mecha out of ult. Not able to pop Cincy here after a third shot. Alt tabbing indeed, very sorry. I've just received from Chia Snacks the overlay for next game in the following if it goes to best of three. So we'll have that up for uh, the following. Oh, Decker here, dodging out the alt. Dr. Gazelle gonna heal in an attempt to win this 1v1. It's kinda close actually, Shield Bow Prox takes a shot from tower. No one going down in that engagement, but lots of uh... Lots of terror damage going down from Tactical, Gaz Tactical Gazelle. Not punished, unfortunately. If your uh, XO here would have liked to pick up a bit of gold to trade back there. But able to run it up. Back safely under tower. Got uh, second Rift Herald coming up, we see THD posturing in top river here. Lots of wards set up, good control in that top river. Exo on the bot lane, maybe gonna opt to try and shove this tier 1 as THD rotates over. Oh, well, Mizmoka taking the brunt of that JSQ after getting rooted up by Ender Wiggins. Gonna be a bit low, got some pots to heal that back up. No, mid pushed is staved off. Lots of range coming out of the Zerath and the Varus again, able to clear it these ways pretty easily. Well, Caribou and Kale, two hands, go over to start up the objective. They opt to fully give up mid prior here though. No waves at the moment. That's gonna be Rift Herald going down though. Second one over to red side this game. Exo just not in a position to push fast enough against the Xerath Ferris Clay. Oh, big damage though. Decker really uh, weaving in these cues, finding damage wherever he can. Try and weaken the wave clear here. Okay, we're stepping out a bit far. Mumuki 1 missing. Looking like a bit of an an ARAM here at the moment. <laughs> Neither uh, squad here really having enough push potential to get in on the other's inner tower, but we do have drag up now. Rift Herald dropped in the mid lane to try and dissuade the engage. Since he's getting hit by the Sejuani all here, cleansing out, can go to the mid wave to try and clear that. No longer able to fight. Oh, flashing. Going down to minions at the end there, a bit of Leandri's burn as well. Sniper Maze Mecha landing two of those shots, getting the flash out of Cincy as well. Unable to survive there. That's Hextech Drake going down as well, with all the gold on Cincy and him going down before the fight. Unfortunately unable to push into river any far further. Mint Tower going down as a result. Both blue buffs getting taken by THD solo laners here. Oh, 
We are starting to see some farm disparities start in the top lane with the 3-0 Kale. And uh, even mid lane, now up 10, once down 20. Maze Mecha coming back into it with the extra gold in his pocket, able to stick around for a bit longer and shove out as need be. Yeah, second item completed on Maze Mecha here as well. Gonna be putting out a lot of damage with that Horizon Focus. Importantly, the revealing enemies passive on it. Super good for Xerath, lets you secure your alt, um, alt shots from far away. Mm, doesn't, uh... Oh, a couple, <laughs> lots of skill shots going wide. All the skill shots going wide. Gonna be Man Puppet flash queuing onto air, uh, Tactical Gazelle here. Gonna drop the state of fight, Man Puppet looking a bit low. Open it up with the Xerath alt. Next target is going to be Ares of Doom, going down as well to more Xerath damage. Looking very strong here with 6 0. Just not quite strong enough to fight back in these jungle skirmishes. Now we had five men from the THD side pull up to that one. And uh, they're pretty scary at the moment. Hello. Hello, oh my goodness. Is that I... a Mystic Ducky? It is. I think I may have to turn you off a bit for the stream. Oh, I can also get myself a little closer. Okay, that this should be good now. Uh, stream, please let us know if it's well balanced. It should be unfrozen here. Yes, great. Um, do we need a Discord stream as well? Uh, no, I can hop in. Okay, great. We can uh, sync up times when you're when you're in. Yeah, I uh, I'm still technically working, but I had a small window before my next thing after work where I was like, you know what? It's commentary and work time. Sounds good to me. It's been a banger of a game so far. Yeah, lots of fights, lots of early gold going on to Cincy, but not able to uh, really capitalize it on it with the extra gold going on to Maze Mecha here. Being outranged, outmatched with uh, the death ball that THD's been putting on. Yeah, THD's been looking fantastic, and the Kale in the side lane is just so close to being completely out of control. Yeah, I think it, unfortunately for XO, may be very, very close to that point. Decker up there to match it right now. See Maze Mecha, oh, flashing out of the Ornolt. Can trade some damage back here, but I don't think too much is going to come out of this one. We do see Dance and Tactical Gazelle both walking over there as Blue Side collapses on Kale top. The only difference is Ares of Doom getting caught here and Kale running out to safety. Here comes Xerathalt, just one shot gonna land, secure that. Caribou's an X target, gonna be hit by Cincy here. Bit of damage going over, but very tanky. And three members of THT just a bit too close for XO to do anything about it. Dan's getting a bit caught up by Man Puppy here, fortunately pretty tanky as well with the two kills I got early. Turning on to Man Puppet here, missing the second Q, gonna go down to Dan's, takes up another kill. Sejuani all going a bit wide, Decker in danger here, Tactical Gazelle flashing in for a bit of damage. E not gonna hit. Able to escape with his life. Alright, I basically synced us up. Huge. Oh, two hands forced Ooh. to blow out here. The Shock Blast no. comes down while the Kale ult's still going, or that would have been a kill. Yeah, good uh, good pick by Ender Wiggins to get the ult damage and knock up off. Unfortunately, just before he got up into the sky, he was able to drop the ult and survive that one. And eat some fruit gummies. He'll back up. Love those fruit gummies. One of the best things Riot's ever added to this game. <laughs> Here's fourth dragon of the game getting started up by Caribou. Oh, maybe didn't mean to hit it. It's gonna be soul point if THD is able to secure this one. XL actually taking prior here. 
Yeah, they left the Kale in the side lane. They could be making the call to try to have Adam flip for it and just let Kale get the tower. Though Man Puppet does get the smite off, and that's the soul stacking at least taken away from X er, from THD. Yeah, game's gonna have to go very late if we're gonna be looking at soul here. I see Decker actually teleporting up to match the Kale. <laughs> oh, Ares of Doom going over as well. Maybe a miscommunication. Man Puppet going back in on tactical gazelle, tactical gazelle here. Actually, That's lots a of tanky damage. Move. Okay. Oh my god, that was close. Yeah. I think uh, Rage Blade stacking is what kept him alive there with a bit of lifesteal on the shield bow passive. Caribou actually going in a bit too deep here since he does have lots of damage despite being behind. Gonna be able to take out the Sejuani. It's Caribou's first death on the board for the game. Yeah, Sinzi, that's Sinzi's fifth kill. If there's anything that is the shining light in the dark for XO right now, it would be Sinzi on this Zaya. Um, though Zaya's not the most comfortable champion into long range like Zara, um, the Sejuani and Leona play very much into how the Zaya wants to play here. Yeah, with Navori completed as well, looking pretty close to that three hour, uh, three item power spike you want your ADCs to be hitting. So maybe uh, able to get some of these big shutdowns, hopefully, onto the Zaya, and look to that ray of hub to uh, carry through the mid-game. HD posturing around this Baron. Maybe gonna spot out the Orn here. Opting to they start it. it yeah. They don't know... They they might be assuming from the vision that they have on top side that Man Puppet is down in that bottom quadrant and there's no chance for a smite. They also did hit 16 on Kale, so that's a massive power spike. Yeah, Decker caught a bit far away on the bot side as well. Gonna be free Baron going over. Perhaps just not enough certainty to walk into that river, even if they knew. It's a hard river to walk into at this stage of the game. I feel like the only way they can really contest is if they already have the setup. It's really hard to walk into the Leona, Zerath, Varus. Like, you'll just get pelted by the Varus and Zerath, and then as soon as you get close enough, you'll get engaged on by the Sedge and Leona. Yeah, THD's drafted some great big champions on this team. Varus ult, Sejuani ult, Leona ult. Kind of uh, hard to do anything into that if you don't have established vision, and THD has been doing really well to keep dominance in each quadrant of the map when they need it. Yeah, they've been very set up around every objective that's been coming up, and oh, oh the okay. snipe's coming down onto Ender Wiggins. Perfectly timed out of Zonia's as well. It's just the side lane Kale. Uh, there, it. All, on top of everything going well on the rest of the map, like even if XO is able to win a fight, Kale is just going to take an inhib or take more towers and just slowly and surely win the game. Yeah, and they're forced to send Zaya over to match it, which doesn't leave too too much wave clear in the mid lane for XO. You know, Jace doing his best with occasional shock blasts, but into Baron it's a bit rough. It's going to be just free top and him going down. Oh, Man Puppet looking for anything here. Gets an ult onto three members of THD. An Unfortunately, not match. enough to take out... Oh, Maze Milky going down to an Orn ult. Down comes... Oh, knock up. Okay. The CC. Kale couldn't get the ult down. She was CC the whole time. The flash away from Dan's. They're flashing over after. Both of them flash. Decker gets the last hit. But the Wolves block it, actually. Hero play by Wolves. Going to go <laughs> down to the two of the skies anyway. Dragon coming up on the bot side, that's a lot of shutdowns. 300 uh, bounty still on the kill, so that's 700 bounty uh, off of Maze Mecha and two hands. Going over both to Decker? No, one to Ares of Doom, one to Decker. So, gonna be a thousand gold up on those two now. Great engage from uh, Man Puppet to, you know, just 
hope for anything here. Able to pick up 2,000 gold off those two bounties. Yeah, and the CC layering onto the Kale was massive. Never giving the Kale the opportunity to ult, because if Kale did ult, it would have just been like early well in the air. Oh, and that, that probably would ult. That probably would have been the play, but it's also really hard to make that call. Because, like, they just hold their damage and then hit you after you land. Yeah. God, Danz is really upset that they got that dragon. Yeah. Murdering Ender Wiggins, chasing after oh, Man Puppet with splash. the flash over from two hands, wanting to end this. Oh, the ego's wide. Oh, Q's back in. Oh. Maybe not what you wanted. Tuan's able to oh. escape tower damage without. Man Puppet looking to turn a bit, unfortunately, a bit over ambitious, but more gold going over to Decker. You know, these uh, team fights, 4 for 1, not great, but gold is gold, right? They got the dragon out of it. They may be able to stave off long enough to get Soul here. Hex took Soul very nice for a Jace. Really good for a Mumu and Zaya, as well as the uh, um, Zyra, Zyra and Zaya. Yes, great, love it. Yeah, they decided to make it hard for the commentary this game. <laughs> I will say, if there's anything that will bring Exo back at this point, that soul can definitely do it. A Jace with this soul is just terrifying. Yeah, AoE slows great into these immobile carries. Um, so, you know, if they're able to hold out for another five ish minutes, maybe a flip worth taking. See, so Dancing Caribou roaming in here, catching Cincy on the road, but forced to alt out to dodge the Leona initial engage, but gonna go down just too much with the follow up alts here from Maze Mecco so many miles away. Actually getting caught out on the backside here by Decker, getting one shot. Blocked by the minimap, sorry. But, gonna get dropped. Yeah, it's huge that they were able to get one kill back, but man, it is just so hard to play from the side of Exo right now. Yeah, not enough tools in since he's uh, champ kit to get away from all of the pick that X, uh, THD has drafted. Here comes a bit more big tactical gazelle ults going wide. Zyra ult, uh, Zyra ult <laughs> coming down. <laughs> not enough in your head. From, yeah, <laughs> not enough follow up from the Ornult, unfortunately a bit late there. But able to uh, fend off another wave here, get a bit more farm onto Decker, and keep their bot inhib alive. Orn is surprisingly a wave clear menace. Yeah, super tanky at this point in the game as well with Anathemas and Force of Nature complete. I'm gonna be protected from most of the poke. You know, we've got some mixed damage from Varus and lots from Maze Mecca. Radiant Virtue, but again a bit of work as well. I've seen the healing going out as well. Looking at Baron number two now. XO not quite in a position to contest this. I see Decker Hex skating out. But already at half health, looks like they're just going to have to clear out waves before THD rotates over. Yeah. All of the the two inhibs being down is just so devastating. And then the vision set up, THD would have seen them coming a mile away. It's hard to make a miracle fight happen here. Trying to get a pick on someone like Two Hands, who's solo pushing mid lane right now, might be their only option to try to get anything. Mm -hmm. That's a full build, almost level 18 kill though. <laughs> it's gonna be really <laughs> rough, even with three members, I think. Yeah, you might have to play that perfectly, or she kills everyone. That goes a bit far away. Rushing over with those hex gates to try and join up with the team on the siege. There's Mecca shooting out the ult for a bit of poke as the wave crashes in here. Ender Wiggins actually almost gonna go down to it. But they're forced to send so many members bot. Two ends able to pick up the top and head again for free on the respawn. 
Exo's gonna have to do something here if they want to keep their inhibs alive. Looking like tower dropping. Oh, big Zyre recall. Oh, Man Puppet fighting two hands. Oh, not for long, he's not. <laughs> Man Puppet <laughs> going down. Caribou actually oh, getting dropped here on the bot side. Just don't think about the base. The base doesn't exist. Kill them all. <laughs> There's nothing Close. you can do about the base anyways. One tower going down, two hands rapidly running away here. Areas of Doom next on the chopping block, there's half health down, CC coming out onto two hands, but uh, just too much damage. Good target selection, opting to drop Decker there. Areas of Doom running away with this guy. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> there's two autos. Or I guess an auto E, but like the point stands. Holy moly. Since he desperately wave clearing here as the rest of THT goes over to the dragon, gonna be matched up 3 3 now. No man puppet in position to snipe that one away, despite Caribou being dead. Here comes the next wave. Baron still on the members for another 30 seconds or so here. Maze Mecha has it out for Ender Wiggins here. Last shot gonna go a bit wide. That Leandri's damage was terrifyingly close. Sneaking away with just a sliver of health. Ooh, the engage on the two hands, though. I don't know if this is the target you can engage onto, especially by yourself. Areas of Doom now at half health, having run away. Yeah, it does have, do uh, have... does have alt up with Verity and Virtue, so it doesn't yeah. need to back off fully just yet. They do have all ults. Tactical Gazelle is low. This could be an angle, but... Two Hands is still just threatening for the end if the Exo tries to do anything. I love this positioning from him. Yeah, Varus and Xerath making sure to keep their range, rotating fully out of the base to hit the hit from as far away as possible. And Puppet's Q not long enough to connect on that one. Oh, damage onto Two Hands getting dropped right away at the start of the fight here. Caribou now caught out, lots of Zaya Feathers recalled. Gonna be going down here as well. Man Puppet finding the Q on. Cincy flashing into follow up, Dan's dropping as well. Gonna be lots more gold into Cincy's pocket. Triple kill going in in the base. Looking for more on the backside, huge Decker damage. Oh, just Q. getting the gate. Yeah, following up though, okay. Flash to the skies to take him down. 600 gold bounty going over to Decker. It's lots of gold exactly where you want it for XO. Losing three inhibs, losing an Axis tower, but still in it? Question mark? Still fighting back, not willing to go down without a fight. Um, the scary part is that's no flashes on the carries for XO. So on the next fight, which is going to be right before the Baron is up, they're not going to have their summoners for that fight. Maybe if there's a good injection of items from the gold they got, then they can look to fight back. But the scaling advantage that the champions like Kale bring is just terrifying. Yeah, full build now being matched on the Zaya here, so any extra gold from here on out, not going to be doing too much. Decker looking to finish up a Merc here, maybe, with the QSS. Also, shout out to Two Hands for saying, who needs boots? <laughs> who needs boots indeed? Sell them. Who even needs to uh, run back Zephyr or something. Them. Here comes next round of Xeroth Artillery. Only one gonna be- oh, two dropped on Thunder Wiggins, taking half health away. Decker, <laughs> so much next damage. up next. Next up next, yes, very good. Commentary is my forte, yes. I think. <laughs> Who else is next up next? Uh, next up next is gonna be the entirety of Whoa, THD the here. Wombo. The Kale ult is down, this could be a fight. This is the fight XO wants. They're getting so much damage onto the front line, the Zyra ult goes down, trying to say the name, it's very hard, Ares of Doom on the back line, but the damage is dead on the side of XO. They're getting run down, Two Hands is untouched, who needs boots if they can't get to you? He kills oh. everyone with a triple kill to Kale. Yeah, and even if it was even aces, look how many super minions are on this low health nexus, just two autos from Two Hands gonna take out the game. GG. A bit scary towards the end, but really well played across the entirety of the 39 minutes of this game by THD.
I'm interested to see how EXO is going to adapt going into game two, and if they're just going to ban the Kale or try to pick something. I don't think there's anything that can match the Kale in Ares of Doom's champ pool. So I'm curious if they're going to do something like putting uh, Dekar on a character that can match the Kale in the late game and be that side lane presence that they need to match. Hmm. Though they so, had more issues than just the side lane to work out. Yeah, early gold, great early game play from Man Puppet to get Zaya ahead, but it just wasn't quite enough with the rest of the map kind of crumbling. Solo lanes, not quite able to hold up once gold was going over to THT's side. Um, so I think getting rid of the kill has to be the option for XO here. It was just too powerful, I think. Um, into the tanks who aren't able to strong punish it. Um, and I don't even know if a hard scaling mid laner would be able to take it out in the late game. Uh, yeah. We're going to see THD on blue side for this game, so draft may shake out a bit differently. Let's see if we can get the um, overlay up this time. Shoop. A. Yay, overlay. And I'm almost done with work. Woo! I Though I am being done with work. Yeah, it's the best. I'm probably not going to be able to stay for uh, all of game two, though, because I do have my post-work dinner that is on its way to my house right now. Oh, do enjoy. Thank you, thank you. In the meantime, you've got a co-commentator for the break. <laughs> oh. Do you think we'll see any big shifts in bands this round? Um, I've got a, I, I was too busy focused on work. I'll have to pull up the draft law from the first game. I've actually just closed it myself. Um, maybe we can pull that up on stream as well for a bit of commentary. Here it is from last game. Um, we saw some strong bruiser jungles being banned out, um, as well as a couple comfort picks. The Velka's going away, the Caitlyn going away. Um, I think if Exo's gonna want to ban the Kale this game, they might need to be dropping maybe the Nocturne, maybe the Ash ban. I don't think it's, you know, safe to leave Velkaz up. And as shown this game, Maze Mecha's Xerath is really powerful as well. Yeah, so, Maze Mecha is terrifying on control mages, just any of them. Yeah, if the uh, Jace wasn't enough to match it in this game, I, I struggle to see what XO will be doing to match it next. Yeah, that's going to be one of the really big questions. I think it's probably you drop the Ash ban for the Kale. Um, I also don't like early picking Zaya. Uh, I like Zaya as a response to engage, and they picked Zaya and then allowed the carries of Exa, or of THD to pick long range stuff. I honestly might have even preferred to see a lethality Barris here to just pierce through, but maybe not. They had double tanks. Um but Zaya's I, I feel like better as a response. So I might want to see that pick go later, though I don't know what I'd want to see XO uh pick early. Yeah, we may see a completely different approach to the game this time and didn't wasn't too terrible in the early game, but as it started to turn into mid-game, um, you know, first, second dragon going down, it became a bit uh, bit shaky for EXO, so we'll see what they opt for heading into game two here. Looks like they are getting started. Yep, going to be same round one bands off the start here, taking the same three in order, Velkaz, Caitlyn, Trundle off the table. We'll see now if Exo chooses to change anything with their second and third.
Was the game to draft law only sent in the lobby oh, chat? Yes, I will send it to the Discord as well. Thank you very much. Okay, we are going to see that Xeroth being taken off the table. Um, just a super safe pick that uh, Maze Mecha is really comfortable on. Yeah, and same bands from THD, opting not to shake anything up with uh, how last game went. Yeah, if and, it ain't broke, you know. Yeah, they are going to leave the kale up, so maybe they thought of an answer to it. Ash going to be the final ban. Two hands maybe... Um, Maybe going to look to pick up the kale again. That's all B1 Sivir. Yeah, nice safe pick. Don't hate it too much. Just I'm gonna a be, Sivir uh, enthusiast. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty good throughout the BTL season, I think. Picked a couple times, notably against um, TSC by Milwaukee Bucks, baby. Really ruining their bot lane in that game. We'll see if uh, THD is able to make use of it here as well. Response is Annie. I don't know if that's going to be going over to Ender Wiggins in the support role um, or mid for Decker. I don't think it's too high on Decker's priority list. Um, I think it's probably pretty good into Sivir though. Um, you know, lots of spells in the rotation, lots of damaging abilities to get rid of the spell shield and still get stun off. And THD getting the Amumu. It's a good flex. Caribou has shown that they're good on the tank and gauge supports, but it's also a Dan's classic, not Amumu support. Yeah, I've known both of them to play this champion a lot, so it's a very good flex to have these two playing together and have a moo moo up. It's value. Yep, yeah, Nexo picked it away in last draft, but not going to be able to take it here. Ooh, Malphite being quickly locked in. THD looking at Syndra here for Maze Mecha. Another strong pick of his. <laughs> Hard to beat him on these control mages, but we'll see what Exo answers with in second rotation. We okay, know for now, the kill. yeah, THD is not going to get Kale this game. Malpha being locked in. Um, yeah, that response of the Kale ban feels very important. Mordekaiser your ban. Interesting. Is Man Puppet a Mordekaiser enthusiast? I don't think it's been too great in the jungle for a couple patches now. I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen Man Puppet play it, but I haven't played with Man Puppet a ton. Mm. Do we think there's any chance this Malphite gets flexed mid? I think that would be hype as hell, but no. <laughs> it was a very quick lock-in, but we'll see. It looks like uh, THD thinks Annie's going to be going mid for Decker. Zyra being banned out against Ender Wiggins here. It was uh, maybe a bit scary to THD last game. Had some really great alts and a couple good roots throughout the mid game as well. Yeah, he was putting on a lot of work while playing that Zyra. Ooh, Hecarim. Hecarim's been a menace these past couple patches as well. I actually really love that pick. Yeah, they've really... If that any gets a Shirelia's, it's all dive. <laughs> We'll see if uh, THD drafts any counter engage or peel here to try and deal with the Hecker and Malpha jumping in. Gonna be a Nasus. Okay. Okay. Idea is the same. And Caribou's Shivana, so it is going to be the Amumu support for Dance. Caribou had a great Shivana game a couple weeks ago um, in BTL. 
worked out really well for them. They were, you know, THD's just been super on top of the vision game. Um, really objective focused gameplay. So Shivana loves stacking those dragons. We'll see if they're able to maybe work their way up to soul this one. Okay. Fizz Hover, looking a bit spicy. Good into Syndra. Going to be the Victor locked in. Also a pretty good matchup for Victor, I think. Um, you know, if Hecarim's able to get some early pressure here, and Victor gets an early killer too, um, maybe able to shut that one out completely. Uh, if there are any mods in chat listening in, um, if we could have a, a bet, uh, a gamba for this game as well, would be much appreciated. We're going to hop into draft champ select now, so we've got another four or five minutes to kill. If you guys are looking for another uh, countdown, let us know. I'm sure we can make it work for you. Yeah. Okay, hey, it's blind out. pick on the blind pick on the client, saving us time. Huge. Huge. Yo, the new battle pass dropped. <laughs> on Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I've been on that battle pass. Omg. Yeah, a Fortnite legend himself is here. <laughs> I had not been hearing anything about this new skin line. This looks fantastic. Oh, fairy court. Yeah, pretty cool skins. I think there's a prestige Katarina one for any uh, knife cat enthusiasts. Or is that Rengar? Knife cat. Yes. They're <laughs> all knife cats at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, I'm something of a knife cat myself. Aren't, you know, I think I think I am too. Maybe a knife dog? Oh, knife dog. Okay. I can see it. Related to up dog? Hmm, what's up dog? A. What is up dog? Uh, I'm not too sure. It's a good question. Not much. What, what's up with you? Oh. <laughs> Sometimes silence is louder than words. It's always good to get a good up dog in there, you know? I do not want up dogs anywhere. No, thank you. <laughs> Okay, how are you feeling about drafts here? Um, I'm feeling a lot better about Exo's draft than last time. But still, that side lane is a really big question for me. I think Victor... Lane? Yeah. Okay. Victor, late game, can answer the Nasus. But oh, then your Victor is designated to wave clearing against Nasus. Yeah. If um, it's uh, if they opt for the four one again, actually they may opt for a one three one this game instead, which would split them up even more. Um, not sure Exo's team has enough wave clear <clears throat> outside of the uh, Victor to deal with that. Shivana should be able to tackle a Malphite in uh, bot lane, sending Nasus top maybe. Yeah. It's uh, it's gonna get very hard to answer. I think just in that aspect alone, I give the advantage to THD. Though I do like the um, the tools that EXO has drafted, and if they can get snowballing and not allow two hands to build that advantage in the side lane and be that split push threat, then I think EXO can take over this game. Yeah, Akram's a great pick to do that on as well. And really strong ganks early and through mid game. We'll see if they offer a tier build or a tankier build. Might make the I've difference been here. Getting dominated by some tier build hackerums. Yeah, it's not fun. I don't like that jump very much. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. It's uh it's definitely an annoying champ. Mm-hmm. 
Mm, almost done here. We're going to have another round of scuff as I try to get game up on stream. Just so we're prepared. <laughs> Hopefully I can load in this time. Hold on, chat. I'll try to figure out how to set up a Gamba. Uh, slash predict. Or uh, slash prediction. Oh. We got a hero over here. <laughs> Something like that, right? I hope. Yes. Huge. Okay. Um. I gotta flip these around. Outcome one. THD win. Outcome two, XL win. Oh, there's not a third outcome. <laughs> Submission good. period. All right, guys, you have one minute. So you can't do any shenanigans once the game started. Maybe more than a minute before we get a game, to be honest. Perfect. But my food's here too. Okay, hey, yeah. enjoy. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining in. Mm -hmm. Let me get this prediction going. I got the teams on the right side. Perfect. Love to um, see. It. Start. Got it. Boom. Someone else is going to have to close it. But go wild, chat. One minute to get your gambas out there. I'm going to go eat some Indian food. Okay, I love Indian food. Enjoy. It's so good. I just came over to the Indian food side, and I am happy to be here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, well, wait, good luck with the rest chat, of the Chat wants to know what you got. Oh, oh, I got chicken tikka masala. Uh, a classic. Yeah, a staple. All righty. Well, goodbye, friends. Good luck with the rest of the cast. I hope the rest of the series is as amazing as the first game was. Yeah, catch you later. Thanks for being here. Bye. Okay, I've just uh, quit out of loading screen. I'm going to try and reconnect here. Stretched reconnect. <laughs> it's going to switch over here for me or no? Please stop staring at me. I'm a bit self-conscious. Oh, League of Legends, would you please launch? Oh, we've done it. Can you see it? We can't see it. Now we can see it. Now we can't see it. Oh, but what about it? Small? Would he please work? What the heck? I'm being scammed. Oh, huge. Okay, we're in it. Uh, black screen bug again. You move the map for any of you at home. Move the map, hit the play button, click on the timeline, and it fixes. Um, control shift z for any of you spectating at home to zoom out even further than you may have once thought possible. We're going to um, turn our uh, objective timers on and our timer off, hopefully. Time controls. Goodbye. Great. We're in it. Looks like a big five-man stack without Man Puppet getting the memo. Going to be running into this bot lane, but uh, unfortunately for EXO, it's going to be thwarted by a ward placed early by Tactical Gazelle. Not wanting anything to do with this. Actually, just a four man stack. Okay. All of them getting spotted out here. Things coming down already. Caribou on his way over to Red Side's Red Side. Ekrim coming on up as well, gonna spot the Nasus out there. So I know something's up. Oh, 
Oh, these guys are stacked on vision. Dan's walking over, not knowing that they're the ones getting caught here. Q coming in. And there's Mecha also with the Q going down. Second Q, it's so long! Oh my goodness, first blood over to Maze Mecha. It's disastrous for XO not knowing that bush is warded. Little skirmish topside as well. Gonna force Caribou off of the blue buff. Or red buff. Hecarim farming freely on those raptors. Dan's getting some nice deep vision here as well. Yeah, big for THD. Unfortunate start for XO here. Big greedy. Ender Wiggins not having the foresight to start Sweeper here. Really, if you're going to be going for that invade, one of your members kind of needs to have it. It's essential. And uh, this is what you get for not having it. Good heads up from the Syndra as well to walk around through the bot side, not getting spotted on vision. So... What Exo might have thought was a 2v2 quickly turned into a 3v2. And THD really on top of the early vision here as well. Try Bush Ward from two hands, gonna spot out the Hecarim if he chose to come in. It is a back angle. And clear top side and head towards bot now. Any uh, spicy item choices? Not looking like it. Got refillable on the Sivir. Classic Sivir things. Big early trade. Decker out of mana already. Is Mecha able to put some damage down there? And Puppet is on a ward right now. We're uh, able to see here. Just expiring. So, even though THT's bot lane is already backed. Gonna be some good information going over. Decker just totally out of mana sticking around here. Does have biscuits up, corrupting pot available as well. Bonk. Bonk. Space Groove Nasus has some pretty cool uh, VFX. I'm a fan. Looks like Sinjur's getting a bit caught out here. Okay. Flash Hecarimi interaction. Pushes the Sinjur back towards tower. Good escape. Could have been detrimental if caught out there. So well done Flash. Keeps the Sinjur alive. Caribou now looking at the top lane. Spotted out on the river ward. Gonna walk to try and walk back up. Scuttle the crowd as a consolation for that. Big wave stacking into the Malphite Tower here. Doesn't look like Caribou's gonna be setting up for any dive, but potential's there. Since he's actually opting for the call on first back, really gonna be looking to farm this one out into the Sivir. Too much has happened here in this early game, but I think that's advantageous for THD here. Caribou sneaking into that dragon pit, and Hecarim on top side right now backing. Probably not going to be able to run down in time to contest this one, if uh, even if they do get knowledge. This is the exact same play that they pulled last time Caribou locked in that Shivana. So any future teams look out for this one. Level 5 sneaky sneaky into the dragon pit. Takes it out. No vision control in the in the uh, bot river there.
Caribou, not level 6, kind of low on health. Gonna run into Hecarim here in the river. Enderwiggins, not gonna walk up. Shivanga running on out of there, gonna get it back off. A little more action in the game. You're telling me. We do have level 6s coming out on our solo laners now. Level 7s even in the mid lane. Okay, Big Singer W. Splinter stacking. Love to see it. Slow early game, slight advantages going over to the HD with the uh, dragon first blood. Farm relatively even, not too much for a board on. <laughs> How are we looking up for stacks? We're eight minutes in. Oh, maybe speaking too soon. Man puppet following up Syndra. Oh, lots of damage. Just gonna get dropped. Wanting to support the top lane play, but walking into a Syndra like that is not allowed. <laughs> Caribou ahead on the play as well, getting the Malphite alt flash out. Looking like free objective number two, going over to THD. Any uh, Syndra alt enthusiasts in chat? If you guys want to tell me um, about your favorite Syndra alt. Make sure to tweet at Bubble Tea League on Twitter with your favorite Syndra clips. And they may get highlighted at uh, this week's Bubble Tea time. Alright, yes, let's get a uh, stack check. Currently at 144 stacks on two hands. Huge. Looking at more than uh, 10 per minute. Love to see it. At 150, well on his way to 400 at 20. Good milestone to be looking for. Caribou engaging onto Decker here. Cinderella coming out, not quite enough. Oh, big flash to get out of the. Oh my goodness. Dan's crazy flash all gonna be stunning up Man Puppet and Decker there to take them both down. Here comes Cincy ulting in onto Maze Mecha. Flashing forward, even trying to get anything out of this play. There's too much CC coming out of the Amumu Qs, looking even for Ender Wiggins as well. Gonna trade one back with that Ignite. Is Mecha narrowly escaping with his life. Dan's escaping with 600 more gold than he started with. And he's going back in. Oh my goodness. That's that second Q. Oh, super boomerang damage almost taking out the Annie as well. Gonna force to back I'm gonna be forced to back off this tower here. Couple uh couple plates maybe gonna go down here. We'll see if Tactical Gazelle overextends here. Malphite Alt is up. Has enough of a gap to get away from that one. Now looking at a 3k gold advantage at 10 minutes. Not insurmountable, but looking a bit rough here for Exo's early game. Great flash hole from Dan's there to tag both members and clean up the initial team fight there. Oh, Caribou with ult up yet again. Onto Decker here. Huge burst damage. Cinderell way overkill to take that Decker down. Harold being summoned mid, got a bit of pressure here, help the Syndra push, 
while Shivani goes off to get the second dragon. I'm not sure if that Q hit a minion, but it's doing awfully little to that Malphite with Thorn Mail completed. Or, uh, Bramble completed. Super quick dragon. Necrim not even able to rotate over in time. Not sure if you wanted to take that fight, though. Mouse is able even to pick up a th almost 30 CS advantage here as well. Malphite damage is not enough to dissuade the stacking. Man Puppet sneaking into the bot lane, actually going to be spotted out on a ward before THD even gets back to lane. Yeah, triple Mia ping coming down. Opting to go deeper, gonna find Dance here. Hacker and Malt a bit short, Annie all coming down on top for a bit more CC. Follow up by the Kai'Sa alt in here, not able to proc the passive, no damage gonna be done to that Amuni. Unfortunately able to waddle out with his life. Lots of resources blown there for an attempt at a kill, unable to secure it. But, you know, from Exo's side, probably a good play. Looking for any kind of gold they can pick up here. Get Cincy rolling into his first mythic. Okay, sidestep the Cinder W. Sure thing. Here's Caribou ulting onto Decker, already half health from the engagement with Syndra. Does get the stun on his W. Caribou unable to follow up much further. Decker escaping with his life, not even forced to burn flash. Still up in CS despite the camp. Caribou's been mid uh, three or four times now. Still 20 CS up. Losing his tower even. Okay, we love Syndra, yes, flash ult, you got him, Mazed Mecha. Supreme display of talent, doesn't even need to lock Kiana. Tyrants actually might have enough damage to finish this one off. Areas of Doom does have flash ult up though, so I'm probably not going to be finishing anything here. And same as last Shivana game, it's going to be AD Shivana looking for a bruiser approach. Got uh, enough AD decidedly, or a AP decidedly, coming out of the 4 0 Syndra at the moment. See, four members of EXO on this top side now. Up against five from THD. Gonna collide with the Annie here after taking Rift Herald. It's done, ult out onto the two hands. Oh, but it's just too much. Dance is there to secure with an ult. Man Puppet charging him with a Hacker ult, not able to trade anything back. Oop. Good to pick up a bit of gold there at the start, get two hands bursted down with the Annie and Malphite ults. But it is going to be top tower falling as well, Dan's looking for a bit more, first Q connects onto the hacker. Devastating getting charged, going to push Dan's back out, but another Syndra ult going to go down. Finish off that hacker. Now I've got Tactical Gazelle hammering away at the mid inner, it's going to go down as well. Devastating across the map. Caribou unfortunately took a bit too much damage at the start of that play. After picking up Rift Herald themselves, I'm gonna not drop it on that play. Third dragon coming up soon. Got about a minute on that timer.
got, once again, all five members from THD on the bot side here. XO in a bit earlier than them, able to set up some dominance in the river. But Nasus with the bot wedge shoving, gonna walk in through... Maybe take a scuttle here. Certainly taking scuttle here. And XO just doesn't have enough gold in their pockets to keep the dominance that they established. Vision was quickly cleared out by THD. But here they come, strong as five. Despite being behind, they do have some very big team fighting alts. Malphite stacked up with the Annie, gonna do a lot to CC them down. It looks like they may be opting to give in favor of a mid push. Good heads up from THD. Sending their members and the Rift Herald bot lane to get a bit of damage while Dan's and Caribou hold the line here. Since you're respawning in the mid lane, gonna crack that mid tower probably. Get a bit of bounty, trade it back over. There's gonna be second Herald crashing as well. Since he not even enough time to crack that mid outer. Exo has to do something here. And Puppet now in the pit with Caribou. Off without calming out. Caribou able to smite secure. Huge Dan's ult. Here comes two hands on the backside as well. Ult comes out. Dan's not quite going to drop, able to be kept alive, Caribou picking up a quick double kill there to finish off the round. See two hands teleporting in behind the Kaisa here, he is well aware of the back in the bush. Oh, big stack. Plus 12. Rift Herald's still alive for a third charge as well. It's looking a bit rough, we're only 18 minutes in. Knocking on that base though. Looks like uh, at least one and a half in him is going to drop here. Rift Herald with the fourth charge, still alive on 46 HP. Finally going to drop to some minions. That is first in him going down, two hands being chased out on the bot side. Second in him going to drop. THD running away with this one. 11k gold up at not even 20 minutes. Malphite Hecarim ults are uh, big for teamfights, but Den says, hey wait, I can hit five of you with mine. Unfortunately for XO, that's what happened. Smite not able to get flipped in XO's favor. And uh, walking away with three dragons and two inhibs on the THD side now. He's Mecha flashing in, unable to connect the W onto Decker. Baron is coming up, ult almost gonna take him out. Man Puppet ulting after the Zonius goes down. Gonna get the kill with the Malphite ult, but Man Puppet dropped quickly after. Ares of Doom now in the fray. Going down to four members. Not too much to do once that happens. A little bit of gold traded back, and the top tower is next on the chopping block. Baron might follow. Let's see how ambitious DHD is feeling here. It's one down. Since he forced to clear out the supers in the bot lane, unable to come to that fight. Yep, it is shut down gold. Going over to the Malphite. Maybe not the best, but it is gold. This is THD now opting for the Baron. Looks like it's being sniffed out by Man Puppet. We'll see if he's able to charge in on time. Gonna stop to clear a ward. I might have cost it. Not opting to go in. Caribou smiting that down. Baron Nasher over to THD. Yeah, at this point, I'm just not sure what angle EXO has back into this game. They don't have great pick ults. They're heavily invested on the 5v5 with their ultimates. Maybe an Annie on top of Isolated Q from Kai'Sa. Um, you know, maybe if Decker's looking at Rabidons, 
Maybe if Decker's able to complete that, maybe get a little bit of M pen afterwards. Might be able to start bursting uh, the squishier members of THD, if they can find them alone. But when you've got such a wombo-focused team and you're behind, it's really hard to come back into these ones. Just gonna be letting the cannon minion barrend up, wail away on this inhib tower. Since he once again forced into the bot lane to pick up those supers. Two hands looking on to Cincy in the bot lane, going a bit deep here. Exhaust gonna come down, match with the Wither to help Cincy walk out of that one. Necker now looking to get a bit of damage, force two hands out of the base. And 3v4 on the top lane here, not a lot of range, not a lot of damage for any of these characters. Caribou not scared at all. Several all coming out, but they're just smacking the tower. Oh, big three-man ult from Dan's. Gonna be one man dropping. Here comes a Hecarim ult. Trading one back. Caribou now down. Oh, but that's Kaisa getting picked off in the back line. Sivir really going off this fight. Miz Mecha pumping out the damage as well. And that's a clean ace on the base. Not a clean ace. I'm sorry. Just an ace. And, uh, me thinks that's game. Nasus smacking these towers. Smack in the Nexus, ending off the game at 23 minutes with 459 stacks. Plus 50 going over. Clean game from THD. Well played. And that's the series, 2-0. Well. <laughs> well, GG's THD. Really well played on second second game there. First game also heavily THD favored, but Nexo able to fight back a little bit. Not so much in game two here. So that will be THD advancing in the bracket now. I think this is winner's side of the bracket, right? Top side of the bracket. Let me pull it up here. Yep, so this is top side of the bracket, and THD going to be advancing to face second breakfast next. And uh, XO will be against the winner of PIOMB coming up later this week. So you can look forward to that. I'll, I guess, go find someone for an interview. Can I, can I do that by myself? <laughs> uh, okay, let me, I guess, mute Discord and go find... Yeah, okay. Okay, hello Dan's. Congratulations on your big substitute win for THD. How are you feeling about that one? Uh, honestly, a lot less nervous than I felt at the very beginning of the series. But yeah. Were you uh, scared of anyone in particular in XO or just... I uh... mean, look, I was sweating a bit with him, Dakar, in the mid lane just because we were uh talking to each other a lot um, before our game came in and uh then i don't know i, just, I was just antsy because first game i decided to take a back seat this season and just be a sub so you know after uh i wouldn't say like five minutes in after i got my first great escape on leona i think i felt very comfortable <laughs> Yeah, it was a great play to slip out of the Amumu repeat gank with your E. Yeah. Um, 
Well, it was a great game all around. How did you feel coming into game two, getting your Amumu pick? <laughs> I was very happy to play Amumu again. Um, specifically, um, we were, had an inkling that the Annie was going to be support. And with the Kaisa picked as well, um, given that we had Sivir, them being fairly short range, uh, I could just walk up and fight them. And then we got the level one cheese when they tried to invade us on a uh, on the try work yeah how did you guys um you know you saw them on the ward well placed from tactical gazelle to spot out the early invade and they just stuck around were you guys surprised that they didn't sweep it out or go to uh, their blue buff a little bit surprised i definitely called it um called uh nathan to back off the moment we saw so many people running there uh and then uh maze mecca kyle went decided that no i'm gonna wrap around don't wait for it and i'm gonna uh slow them with you and so he wrapped around and just created the play for for us to easily just take advantage and it looked like your your classic engage supports fit in really well with this team comp. Is it something that they, you know, um, Asian Problems doesn't typically play the, you know, Leona Mumu kind of champ? Is it something that they tailor draft towards this time around? Or is it something that just kind of fit in naturally? Um, I think a little bit of both. Um, they asked me what I like to play. I default to engage champions. Uh, and uh, I've played a lot with Caribou before, as we won one BTL season together. Uh, we know, like we like to both go in together, so having uh, dive synergy is always fun. Um, yeah, um, they basically asked me what my comfort picks were, and Leon and Amumu were numbers one and two, <laughs> so mm -hmm. very much happy to bust those out. Yeah, it looks like it worked out really well for you guys in the end. Um, I guess congratulations to THD um, for the big win. Uh, we have another game, TSCRB, coming on tomorrow, 7 p.m. PT. Uh, oh, not tomorrow. It is not the 28th. It's just turned over. Uh, on the 29th, we have TSCRB. Um, do you have any uh, predictions for that one, I guess? I'm gonna say RB wins. Okay, sorry, I, I can't um, ask you about your next matchup because you are just subbing. But, <laughs> uh, you hear it, heard it here first. RB win, heard it from Dan's. Um, that's gonna do it. Thank you, Dan's, for the interview. Thank uh, you for having me again. Congratulations, THD, for the big win, and uh, catch you guys on the 29th.